and I'm one of, oops, uh, sorry, I'm one of um, the newer faculty for Jinshin Jitsu for Animals. And as many of you know, we're running these um, study groups um, to help people um, get to know us uh, during these times of, you know, it's still pretty quiet. People, not many people come to classes and things like that. And so um, it helps us to get to know some of you and it broadens our scope. Uh, we have recently kind of revamped how, we, how we've done this. And so rather than go through the books that you have and that sort of thing, we decided that we would change the format a bit and we would start with some self-help and then, um, and then to tell a story and then people can comment or tell their own stories. And um, we have about a half hour to 45 minutes for people who can stay a little bit longer. We're really, really happy to have you guys with us today. Um, and for those that don't know me, I've been studying and practicing Jin Chen Jitsu for over 15 years and then recently became one of the faculty. In my experience, I have learned a lot about working with animals from the work that I do with people, but reversely, I've learned a lot about uh, working with people from animals. Um, and um, today I'm, I want to share a story about an experience that I had uh, with a horse named Alaska. So we'll get into more of that and um, hopefully you'll learn something a little bit different than what's in the books. And afterwards, depending on how much time we have, we can share uh, with other people, with other stories, or you guys can ask questions, whatever you want to do. This story is related to applying some of what I've learned from uh, humans um, to what happened with Alaska. And part of that is because people can tell you what they experience. And with animals, it can be, even if you're an expert animal communicator, it can be more difficult to figure that out um, with animals. And um, during a regular session, sometimes an animal may experience something that feels kind of weird to them and they'll walk away and um, many times come back and you can continue to work with them. If they walk away and don't come back, you try it again later. Um, but sometimes things don't, don't show up for 24 hours or later. And um, something might come to surface for them. And that's what this story is gonna be about. So our self-help, I chose our self-help based on, um, on the sort of the tail end of this story. And so uh, for those of you that um, have taken five-day classes. This will be in your practitioner book. It's called the 20-21-22 flow, and the self-help is the first three steps of that. It is not in your animal book, and so we're going to um, go through this uh, particularly right now. This whole flow helps uh, mental stress, brings peace of mind, it helps clear our minds, and it can release any limitations that we have in our mind. And for those of you who'd like to, you can do this along with the 36 breaths because we're gonna hold three different safety energy locks and you can count 12 breaths with each one. I will be counting my breath and I'll move on with that uh, as we go. Um, so um, we'll start with, you take your left hand and put it on your left 12. And for those of you that might not be familiar, you just place your hand um, with your fingers just, just on this side of the spine and where your middle finger is, that's safety energy like 12. And you'll keep that hand there for the whole three flows. And then we're gonna take a right hand and we're gonna touch safety energy like 20, which is just above your forehead. And I usually tell people if you're really gentle in your touch, you can, um, feel a very slight indentation. And that's where sort of the center of um, safety energy like 20 would be. And so just gently leave your hands there. And as we do this, you might choose to just simply close your eyes and drop your shoulders and think of smiling internally. 
and you can begin to count your breaths. Releasing Safety Energy Lab 20 helps you see as the creator sees, everlasting and eternity. Now gently bring your hand straight down to the bottom underneath side of your cheekbone. I usually just kind of follow it down till the end of that and then um, place um, one to three fingers in that area. 21 helps us with profound security and escape from any mental bondage. It helps us release mental tension or stress. And from there, you just bring your fingers directly down to where they will be right at your collarbone. And I place mine right underneath the collarbone at the bottom edge. That's safety energy lock 22. 22 is total completeness, happy and content wherever we go. Now, when you are ready, you can bring your focus back to the group and just take a minute to notice what you notice. And Susan, if you would open up the PowerPoint, we can go on with Alaska story. Okay. Um, so this is where we begin with Alaska's story and go to slide two. So this is Alaska. This photo was taken uh, last winter when it's warm in, in our area. Um, Alaska um, is a wonderful Percheron and she is the leader of her small herd. She is known to be a very gentle and tolerant uh, leader. She lives, they all live at a place called Windhorse Retreat with her owner, Sandy and Sandy's partner. Um, and uh, 
they're about an hour from me. And so I don't get to see her as much as I'd like, but I love this horse. And the last, so the next screen. Laska, um, her story offers us a lesson in understanding and recognizing how an animal can process an emotional release. Um, Alaska, um, in this story, it was, it was a two-day class that I was having at um, Windhorse Retreat, and um, uh, Alaska had been part of the group on day one and then part of the group on day two. Uh, if you want to switch to screen four. Um, so on the first day, students uh, worked with several horses, but those that worked with Alaska, um, they were they offered um, the initial hold, 13 and 10, and then we did the bladder function energy. And then the second day, uh, we worked on 1125 and 1115. And really, they these flows are not the point of the story because Jin Chen Jitsu is about letting go. It's the things that we hold on to that cause problems for us. And so um, no matter what flow you're doing, you're helping um, the being to release some of those accumulations that they have. Um, uh, so while the students were finishing practicing um, on the horses that day, her Sandy, her owner, asked about um, there, was there a chance that she was holding on to a stressful situation in the past? And that situation was uh, when Sandy and Alaska first met, she got Alaska was 13 years prior to this. And where she lived, she put uh, Alaska in a stable. And at that place, they worked with Alaska using a lot of mechanical means to control her. And about a year later, Sandy moved. And so she moved Alaska with her and where Alaska lived there, these people worked very hard on the more holistic side of it. And Alaska eventually became bitless and shoeless um, and now lives with Sandy at her own place. Um, but Sandy was wondering if there was a, if I thought that anything could still be there left over from that and um, wanted to know if there was a flow that could help her release. So as I was standing there next to Alaska, I thought, well, why were they controlling? Why, would, why did they want to use mechanical things? And I decided it was to control her. And so I thought of 12 that, um, my, thy will, not my will, and stubbornness. And then I thought, okay, how can I work with 12 easily? And I wanted to release any of the mental things she'd been holding. So I did the flow that we just did to start with. And I started with 20 and then 21 and then 22. Um, after completing that um, short flow, Alaska kind of wandered off. If you want to, um, switch to the next slide. Um, okay, sorry, skip this slide, I missed one. And, um, and so um, Alaska kind of wandered off into the um, area and laid down. And you could go to slide eight. Um, and so in this flow, this is what I expected, the same as what we did when we did this. And then move on, please. Um, and so she went and laid out in this field and everybody was interested in watching her. If you go to the next slide, this is the one that, oh, we're missing a slide. There's a slide in there of her laying down, maybe it's on the last one, the here. So when she laid down like this, people were concerned. And I have seen this before, and so I wasn't very concerned. And I was willing to let her work through the process. And eventually, um, people were so worried about her that I went over to see Alaska, and that will be the next slide. 
And Alaska pretty much let me know that she was okay and to leave her alone. So we left her for a while. Um, she um, eventually rolled a bit and, um, and got up and started walking around. And I would say that process took about 15 minutes. And so you can go to the next slide, please. There we go, it's kind of the recovery. So the first place she headed once she walked around was water. So this is a water um, place for her. And um, that kind of began her recovery from this flow. Um, and so uh, after I left, I came back up probably three or four weeks later just to visit Sandy. And um, she told me, I think you can go to the next screen. Um, she told me that Alaska had begun to behave in ways she had never done before. And one of those was trying to buck her off. Um, and Sandy herself does some other types of energy work and had tried uh, working with her, but um, Alaska just was not herself. And so I spent a little bit of time with her, um, talking to her and um, decided to offer a particular flow. I started with the 10 and 13 and then moved into the 26, safety energy lot 26 and 15. And that's, that flow is in um, your books. It's on the new, in the new book, it's um, pages 43 and 44. This step of holding 26 and 15 is the very last step in the practitioner book for a full flow. And this flow helps to uh, release limitations. It gets rid of unnecessary accumulations. It helps us to re release energy that doesn't belong to us, so for her. And so um, that's what I held. I'm not sure if there's a picture of that or not. Um, when I was holding that with her and she was very quiet and very calm. Um, 26 and 25, um, sorry, 26 and 25, when you work on those, it also helps safety energy lock 24 and 24 is kind of about chaos. So um, clearing 24 brings peace of mind and body. 26 is the life force for the total being. And 15, of course, washes our hearts with joy and laughter. So now you can go to slide 11. And Alaska has returned to her warm and her wonderful self. This has been a couple of years and she's never had anything like that that happened again. Um, and so I'm hoping that this story, this example, offers you something to think about with your own animals. Um, uh, releasing what we accumulate is our goal to help bring balance and harmony. And there are times what comes up can confuse the being. It's something for you to watch out for. The lesson that I had that I think of <clears throat> that helps me with this, I had a client, client a young woman, who um, I treated and then um, she came back in a week and she said, for five days, I was so mad at you and I didn't even know, you know what I should do about it. And I kind of laughed because what I find is when anger comes up, people don't always know where it comes from. If it's been stuffed away for so long, it can bubble up as you're releasing and as it comes up, people feel anger. And she said after five days, she figured out um, that it wasn't me. <laughs> and so I think that that's what happened with Alaska, with that other flow, that there were things that were tucked away. I don't know for sure that they were related to that first stable, but they certainly, she didn't know what to do with them. And she was objecting and acting out and that kind of thing. And, and once she was able to release what had come to surface, she went back to being, you know, her wonderful self. And there's, this can happen with animals. Um, I do a lot of rescue work. And so sometimes I don't get to see the animal after the first time. Um, and so I don't know if this happens, but I've had other people call me and ask me about what's happening with their cat or their dog in that regard. And that's my story. So I wonder if- um, Tom has a question. 
Um, I have no idea if Alaska was on a warming regimen for zymectrin or tubing. I don't believe so. Um, I don't think that she, um, I mean, she gets regular treatments, but I, I'm not there. I'm, a, I'm an hour away from her, so I'm not involved in her day-to-day -day care, but it was never brought up. That's too bad. Any other questions? Anybody else have a story they would like to relate? I actually have a question for Tom. What are you thinking about the worming, Tom? 85% of horse deaths are caused by parasites. And uh, I was on an endurance race and this guy was riding his family quarter horse, beautiful black horse with big belly. And of course the endurance doing 50 milers, the horses are pretty trim and fit and the horse died and I was there and the owner's wife came up just as the vet was doing an autopsy cut open the belly and it was just writhing with parasites and that's um important zemectrin that you can get a paste and you put it in their mouth and hold them up so they don't spit it out a tubing is more difficult because sometimes you got to tie them up so they can't strike and you send a tube down into the stomach and and give the worm medicine, but that's the older way. But I would, I would for sure do that with all. All horses should be on some kind of a worming uh, regimen, especially if they're in pasture where they can pick up, you know, from other horses. You know, if they're in a corral type thing. I wonder too if um, the thickness of their herd. Maybe when a horse dies, just before it dies, its pulse, respiration, everything will return to normal. I've worked on a lot of horses that were, were sick and usually uh, horses that have been pushed too hard, the owners are too exhausted. So the people that are there will do that. And you don't put them in the water, you know, bring buckets of water to them, but keep them, keep them walking. And uh, I always carry, see if I, I had to do a, an IV where I held the IV up for an hour and a half because uh, if the horse is really in bad shape, they need oxygen and IV and uh, I call it the thumps where the heart, heart and respiration are 150 or more in sync. But this one mare, I held it up there and then I had to pony her 13 miles to get her back to camp. And she was just kind of wanting to cuddle. I was holding the fours and her, her head against my leg so I could feel her pulse respiration, my thigh. I, can, I In my saddle, I can always feel my horse's heartbeat. It's on the left side and I can feel it through my legs. So I always know what it is. And at some point, Tom, did you ever offer Jinchen Jitsu to this horse? The horse that died, I'd never seen him before, but the, okay. the, the mare that I was doing, I was doing, I actually held her fours and brought her against my thigh, her chin, so I could feel her respiration and heartbeat. And I ponied her 13 miles into, into camp. This is on the Chief Joseph trail ride. And the, the owner was totally exhausted and hysterical and the horse had collapsed and she had collapsed. And we got the vet there, but I had a sponge with a long rope on it and I'd throw it into the water and then I'd sponge down her neck. It was 90 degrees and I do that on my, endurance you know i'll go through the water and get the sponge and sponge them down as we run through and uh but she was just we were doing about 2.5 miles an hour normally my horse walks about 7.2 miles an hour and so she just felt like a little girl that wanted to cuddle up with her mama and i just held her like that she was pregnant too and it was uh yellowstone fire um but her owner was relieved when she came in and she had a baby and I got a card from her, but it was interesting because I could just feel the emotions from the horse of like a little girl being loved by her mama, as opposed to, you know, some of my horses aren't that way. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. 
Anyone else? Um, Robin, I wonder with the um, size of her neck, of her um, main area, if um, I feel like that 2615 would be really good for the accumulation that she had. And that, I mean, the fact that you did 2615 is great, but I just, uh, you know, 26 helps with accumulation also and getting rid yeah. of, of accumulation. So I feel like you know, that's something that uh, is also good when you see lipomas or anything like that as well, so. Yeah. One, one, one other thing is if the horse is bucking, I don't know if you're familiar with tying up, but I would cut out sweet grain because there's sulfur and molasses that's in the sweet grain and it can cause tying up, which is a pain over the, the back and the kidney area and they're more apt to, to buck because of that pain. I, I go with oat flakes, 200 degree, you know, oat, oat flaked oats is the, the best thing. Well, in this case though, Tom, she, her diet didn't change. She's on a very good diet. It was the fact that she had never ever bucked. Yeah. And, and so it was a personality change that came back to her normal after um, helping her kind of get rid of whatever had come to surface. Yeah, yeah. And Robin, what, yeah. it's interesting to me too that that 2021 20, 22, it's so, you know, in, in some parts of the work, we talk about bust line, waistline, hip line, spirit, mind, body. And we see that trinity over and over again. Right. And so you were that, that boy, talk about a release. 20 corresponds to bust line, 21 freedom from mental bondage to waistline, 22 that detox flow, that happy and content to the hip line. So you really, even in a simple three step, you were really looking at a very total body. Um, such, such a beautiful choice. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Well, it but... You know, Mary says in a few moments, more or less, <laughs> you know, and we always want it to be instant. Less. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, 33 years in, I need the spleen flow every day. One of these days I may move on. <laughs> you know? um, I think this is phenomenal rob robin took a dive in the deep end because people had conflicts of time so she's the first time anyone's done it all by herself and you were great and and carrie and susan bravo and with the link being wrong and people not being able to get on what a beautiful turnout Bravo. And just because I can toot my own horn, I just have to tell you, two of the folks on this call are I'm related to. So woo -hoo, woo -hoo. <laughs> So my sister is there, Susan, and her daughter, my godchild, Kathleen, is next to her. So hey, we'll if any of you are not on our email list and you would like to be on our email list, please type it into the um, chat and we will add you to that list. And we will be turning this into a YouTube. We have now come up with our own YouTube channel. Tell me if I'm saying this right. And so you will be able to go on that channel and be able to see this. So we'll send you the link to the YouTube channel uh, in order for you to review this if you'd like to see it again. Or any of the others, is that true? Yeah, we, we started doing that maybe, I don't know, maybe two months ago. Um, we're just learning all of this, yeah. you know, but that, that way there'll be a full library for people to be able to return to. If we get good titles on it, you'll be able to go and find what you need when you're looking for it. So, um, oh, thank you, Bonnie. And let's see, I can tell you the next one is the 17th, November 17th, eight o'clock Eastern. So we used to be jumping around more, but now we've decided that that was hard for folks. So we are the first and third Thursdays of the month 
at eight o'clock Eastern. We know that that cuts out a lot of the Europeans. Um, so that's why we've decided to record them and have them for folks to go back to. So. Well, thank you all for coming. We'll, uh, Carrie and um, Susan and I are gonna hang on for a few minutes. We'll make sure we get everybody's email that showed up on here and get it transferred before we leave the meeting. I have a quick little story about my cattle dog, but it's not gentian. It's just about something that happened on Halloween. Okay. <laughs> He's very friendly and he loves kids. And when he figured out what was going on, he's four. Um, he was at the door for every single kid. And, and um, I would, before I opened the door, I'd say he's dog friendly and um, you know, nobody objected, let him go loose out. Sometimes he'd run down and say hi to the parents and come back. Um, there was this one woman that came up with two, I'm gonna guess two and a half year olds, a girl and a boy. And um, she said the, dog, the kids were dog friendly. So I let him out. He said hi to all three of them. And we went, after I gave him the candy, we were going back in the house and Prince turned around and gave the little boy a kiss on the face. And oh, the little wow. boy was appeared to have Down syndrome. So it's just one of those things, horses are so intuitive and so are dogs. It's just yeah. one of those intuitive type things that he had. It's like, oh, wait, this little boy, I'm going to be, he, he needs something special. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's yeah. really nice. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, oh, he kissed you. He loved you. And the mom said the same thing. And then they happily left. That's beautiful. <sighs> Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. It's heartwarming. Thank you all. Um, are the, are the, I, I can't, how do you get to the replays at this point? Well, we have to record it and then we will send you. Um, no, but the, the other, the replays from the past, the past weeks. Um, if they're on our YouTube video, it'll be the same link, right? The same channel. The same channel. But we sent a leaked link to that channel. No, we would actually load them up there and then and then they're available on that channel. But that's what she's asking is how does she get to that channel? I, I don't have. This is my first time doing this YouTube. I, yeah, I was looking for it, but I don't see I don't have it on this computer. So I'll, we'll we'll send it out to anybody that gave us their email. <laughs> we need to be continued. We're all figuring this part out. And <laughs> Jude is not on this call tonight, and she is our, Jude and Tate are our best YouTube connections. Yeah. So as long as your email address is, if you've given it to us before and you've been with us before. Yeah, um, I, yeah uh, I was, but I didn't get anything. So I'll put that in here again. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. We're going to get better at this. <laughs> and we know where you live. <laughs> if, if, well, come on, right for tea. if you know the title of the youtube event you can google it and usually find it okay oh, so, so dorothy dorothy put something on there and does that go to the jinchen jitsu um i don't know what our title is the teacher group or no, the, the title of the episode the title of the episode robin dorothy at put it in the chat We've and that's the one that things. goes correctly to all the other previous videos? Yes. Or does it go? Okay. Because it's Jinshin Jitsu for your animal companion. And yeah, that's yeah. all you need. That's all you need. Just Google that, and then you can scroll through them and find it without having to, you know, if you don't have the links. Okay, you guys write, down, write this down before you sign off. Um, and we'll also make sure it's the correct one. and. Well, if everybody well, save, then, if they save their yeah. tag, then they'll have it. It looks like Lynn Bryson was trying to talk and she was, oh, now she's unmuted. There we go. I have a story I'll share next. 
time okay. about being at the refuge and it's with an African giant tortoise. Well, I and I believe know. you worked with them also. I worked with a different one, Lynn, but there were two of okay. them there. And so I worked with a different one, but that's it's a great it's a great story. So that, I'd appreciate that because it's already almost 20 to 7. Yes, I must sign off. Thank you very much. Okay. I just wanted to let you know they got relocated, though, over to the middle behind the dogs. So now they have more grass to play Perfect. in. All yeah, they're very happy Perfect. tortoises. Yay. Great. Thanks for that update. Okay. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Thank guys. You.